The maritime defense industry stands at the precipice of a technological revolution, one that promises to fundamentally alter the nature of naval operations for generations to come. At the forefront of this seismic shift is Saronic Technologies, an Austin-based innovator that has just made two earth-shattering announcements that will reshape global naval capabilities. The company has not only unveiled its groundbreaking Marauder Autonomous Surface Vessel, but has simultaneously acquired Gulfcraft, a Louisiana shipbuilder with six decades of experience, in a move that signals America's serious commitment to maintaining maritime superiority in an increasingly contested world. Welcome back, guys. Alfie here, bringing you another shocking AI update. First ever AI robot vessel shocks the world, and AI Nexus will cover every detail as it unfolds. So stay tuned and let's go. This strategic development couldn't come at a more critical time. As global tensions rise and naval warfare becomes increasingly complex, the need for advanced, cost-effective solutions has never been greater. The Marauder represents more than just another naval asset. It embodies a complete reimagining of what maritime operations can achieve when unconstrained by human limitations. Measuring an impressive 150 feet in length, this autonomous marvel boasts capabilities that would be unimaginable in traditional crewed vessels. With a staggering payload capacity of 40 metric tons and an operational range extending 3,500 nautical miles, the Marauder can maintain station for over 30 continuous days without human intervention. These specifications alone would make it noteworthy, but it's the vessel's artificial intelligence core that truly sets it apart from anything that has come before. The technological heart of the Marauder lies in its sophisticated autonomy stack a proprietary system developed by Saronic that represents years of research and refinement. This isn't merely a remote-controlled vessel operating on pre-programmed routes, but rather an intelligent platform capable of making real-time decisions in dynamic maritime environments. The AI system processes vast amounts of sensor data to navigate complex waterways, identify potential threats, and adapt mission parameters on the fly, all without human oversight. This level of autonomous operation dramatically reduces the cognitive burden on command centers while simultaneously increasing operational tempo and effectiveness. Perhaps most revolutionary is the cost differential between autonomous platforms like the Marauder and traditional crewed warships. By eliminating the need for life support systems, crew quarters, and the extensive infrastructure required to sustain human operators at sea, Saronic has created a platform that delivers comparable capability at a fraction of the cost. This economic advantage could prove decisive in an era where defense budgets are stretched thin and the need for naval presence continues to grow across multiple theaters of operation. Saronic's vision extends far beyond this single vessel. The company has been methodically building an ecosystem of autonomous platforms designed to operate across the full spectrum of naval operations. Their spyglass model, though modest in size at just six feet long, represents a paradigm shift in tactical reconnaissance. Designed for deployment from larger vessels or expeditionary craft, these nimble autonomous units can operate individually or in coordinated swarms to provide unprecedented situational awareness in contested waters. The intelligence gathering potential of such systems is staggering, offering commanders real-time data streams without risking human operators in dangerous environments. The Cutlass platform expands this capability further with its 14-foot frame accommodating more substantial payloads and extended operational ranges. This intermediate solution bridges the gap between surveillance and action, capable of deploying loitering munitions, establishing adaptive communication networks, or conducting persistent tracking operations against surface contacts. Its versatility makes it particularly valuable for joint force operations where rapid response and flexible capability are paramount. Until the Marauder's introduction, Saronic's largest offering was the 24-foot Corsair, a platform specifically designed to address urgent operational requirements with its open modular architecture. The Corsair's ability to rapidly integrate diverse payloads and sensor packages has made it particularly attractive for naval forces needing customizable solutions for electronic warfare, mine countermeasures, or rapid response scenarios. What all these platforms share is Saronic's disciplined engineering philosophy and vertically integrated approach ensuring reliability and performance across the entire product line. Saronic's acquisition of Gulfcraft represents a quantum leap in production capacity and industrial capability. 
the Louisiana-based shipbuilder brings more than 60 years of maritime construction experience to the table, along with nearly 100 acres of strategically located shipyard space. This acquisition isn't merely about adding manufacturing capacity, it's about creating an entirely new paradigm for naval production. Saronic has announced plans to invest over $250 million in facility upgrades, modernizing infrastructure and implementing advanced production methodologies that will allow for unprecedented scaling of autonomous vessel construction. The implications of this industrial expansion are profound. With these upgrades, Saronic expects to achieve production capacity of up to 50 unmanned vessels annually, a figure that would have been unthinkable just a few years ago. This production surge couldn't come at a more opportune moment, as demand for autonomous naval solutions continues to grow exponentially among both military and commercial operators. The retention of Gulf Craft's skilled workforce, combined with plans to create over 500 new specialized positions in the coming years, demonstrates Saronic's commitment to not just technological leadership, but also to the revitalization of American shipbuilding expertise. Looking further ahead, Saronic has unveiled even more ambitious plans for what it calls Port Alpha, a next-generation shipbuilding facility that could represent an investment exceeding $2.5 billion. This visionary project aims to create a dedicated production hub capable of delivering hundreds of autonomous vessels each year while generating thousands of high-tech jobs. Port Alpha symbolizes Saronic's long-term commitment to reshaping the naval industrial base, combining cutting-edge manufacturing techniques with advanced robotics and artificial intelligence to create what could become the most sophisticated shipyard in the world. The strategic timing of these developments cannot be overstated. As China continues its aggressive naval expansion and investment in autonomous systems, the United States faces mounting pressure to maintain its technological edge in maritime domains. Saronic's advancements arrive precisely when they're needed most offering a path to rapidly expand naval capability without the prohibitive costs and lengthy construction timelines associated with traditional crewed warships. The ability to field large numbers of intelligent autonomous platforms could fundamentally alter the balance of power in contested waterways around the globe. Beyond immediate military applications, the implications for commercial maritime operations are equally transformative. The same technologies powering the Marauder could revolutionize cargo shipping, offshore energy operations, and maritime research. Autonomous vessels operating with machine precision could optimize shipping routes, reduce fuel consumption, and eliminate the human cost associated with dangerous sea passages. The potential for these systems to enhance global trade while improving safety is enormous. As we stand witness to this technological revolution, it's clear that Saronic's announcements mark more than just corporate milestones. They represent inflection points in maritime history. The Marauder and its supporting fleet of autonomous platforms signal the beginning of a new era in naval operations, one where artificial intelligence and advanced robotics work in concert to achieve missions that would be impossible or impractical for human crews. With its strategic acquisition of Gulf Craft and ambitious plans for Port Alpha, Saronic isn't just participating in this transformation, it's actively driving it. The coming years will undoubtedly see further refinements and expansions of this technology as autonomous systems become increasingly sophisticated and integrated into naval doctrine. What began as experimental programs and proof-of-concept demonstrations has now evolved into a fully-fledged industrial capability, ready to deliver game-changing platforms at scale. For naval strategists, defense analysts, and technologists alike, Saronic's recent announcements serve as both a revelation and a challenge, revealing the astonishing potential of autonomous maritime systems while challenging traditional assumptions about how naval power should be structured and deployed. As this new chapter in maritime history unfolds, one thing is certain, the rules of naval engagement and maritime operations are being rewritten before our eyes. The age of autonomous AI-powered vessels has arrived and its impact will be felt across oceans and continents for decades to come. Saronic Technologies, through its visionary leadership and bold investments, has positioned itself not just as a participant in this transformation, but as its vanguard, shaping the future of maritime operations one revolutionary platform at a time. And if you think that's crazy, just wait until you see Elon Musk planning to use Optimus for Mars exploration. Yes, you heard that right. That's right, in just two years, we could see a humanoid robot walking on the red planet. But here's the kicker. 
The details behind what Elon is planning are so insane that even NASA veterans are struggling to process. Them. Welcome back, guys. Alfie here, bringing you another massive update. Timeline for Optimus going to Mars now unveiled. And we've got the shocking details, so AI Nexus will cover every detail as it unfolds. Let's go. Let's start with the hard facts. During a private SpaceX briefing yesterday, Musk confirmed plans to launch five Starship rockets during the 2026 Earth-Mars transfer window. One of those massive 403-foot-tall vehicles will carry an uncrewed Tesla Optimus unit to the Martian surface. This isn't some conceptual PowerPoint presentation. Hardware is being built right now at Starbase in Texas. The mission has one clear objective. Prove that Starship can land safely on Mars before risking human lives. Now here's where things get wild. Musk isn't just sending Optimus as a passive payload. The robot will be tasked with performing actual preparatory work for future human settlement. We're talking about a humanoid machine walking on another planet, handling tools, and potentially even constructing basic infrastructure. If this works, it would mark the single most ambitious robotics achievement in history. But the timeline has experts divided. While Musk says 2026 is locked in, Top astronomers like Derek Pitts believe we're realistically looking at 2050 before the technology is truly ready. Let's break down exactly how this insane mission would work. The journey itself is a nightmare of physics. Between 80 to 150 days of travel covering anywhere from 34 to 250 million miles depending on planetary alignment. Starship would need to execute a propulsive landing through Mars's paper-thin atmosphere, something no spacecraft has ever accomplished at this scale. Current Mars landers use parachutes, but Starship's massive size makes that impossible. Instead, it'll have to flip sideways and fire its Raptor engines with impossible precision to avoid crashing. And that's just getting there. Once on the surface, Optimus would face temperatures swinging from minus 200 degrees Fahrenheit to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, constant dust storms, and radiation levels that would fry most electronics. The robot's 5 miles per hour walking speed suddenly becomes a life-or-death feature when you realize one wrong step could mean mission failure. Musk claims Optimus can carry 45 pounds, but can it do that in Mars 38% gravity while navigating unpredictable terrain? That remains to be seen. The logistical challenges are even more mind-boggling. Each Mars mission requires something called orbital refueling, essentially a gas station in space. Current estimates suggest this would demand up to 20 additional Starship launches just to fuel one Mars-bound vehicle. We're talking about an unprecedented ballet of spacecraft rendezvous and fuel transfers. All automated, all needing to work perfectly. Then there's the question of what exactly Optimus would do on Mars. SpaceX has been characteristically vague, but leaked documents suggest three primary objectives. Testing mobility systems in Martian gravity and terrain deploying and maintaining solar arrays for power generation, and potentially beginning site preparation for future human habitats. This last point is where things get really sci-fi. Musk has hinted at having Optimus manipulate local materials, essentially using Martian dirt and rocks to create rudimentary structures. The robot's hands, designed for factory work on Earth, would need to handle entirely different tools and substances millions of miles from any human assistance. The financials are equally staggering. Scientific American estimates the full Mars program could cost trillions, yes, with a T. Even for the world's richest person, that's an impossible sum without government partnership. Interestingly, NASA has been suspiciously quiet about these plans, despite their own Mars ambitions. Some insiders suggest there may be behind-the-scenes collaboration happening, while others believe Musk is going full cowboy against NASA's warnings. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Elon's track record with deadlines. From Hyperloop to full self-driving cars to Mars colonization by 2024, the man has a history of wildly optimistic timelines. Even he admits the 2029 crewed mission target is theoretical, with 2031 being more realistic. But here's what's different this time. The hardware actually exists. Starship has flown, albeit with mixed success, and Optimus prototypes are walking around Tesla labs right now. The technological dominoes that need to fall for this to work are almost too numerous to count. Starship must achieve reliable Earth orbit and return. Orbital refueling needs to be perfected. 
Mars entry, descent, and landing systems require complete redesign. Optimus must be hardened against radiation and extreme temperatures. Autonomous operation systems need near-perfect reliability. Recent Starship tests show both promise and problems. While March's flight ended in explosion, the vehicle did achieve several critical milestones first. This pattern of fail fast, iterate faster, has been SpaceX's MO from the beginning but Mars leaves no room for error. Perhaps most fascinating is the philosophical shift this represents. For decades, Mars exploration meant rovers specialized machines perfectly adapted for the task. Musk is betting everything on general purpose humanoids instead. His argument? Future colonies will need robots that can use human tools in spacesuits. It's a gamble that could either revolutionize space robotics or become a very expensive lesson in planetary exploration. As for Optimus itself, the specs are impressive. 5'8", 125 pounds, 5 miles per hour walking speed, 45 pounds carrying capacity. But Mars presents challenges no Earth testing can fully simulate. How will its actuators handle months in zero gravity followed by Martian gravity? Can its vision systems cope with Mars's unique lighting conditions? These are unanswered questions that keep NASA veterans up at night. The radiation issue alone could be a deal breaker. The Earth's magnetic field protects us from cosmic rays, something Mars lacks. Optimus would need shielding that doesn't exist in current models, especially for its delicate AI systems. Some experts suggest the only solution might be burying habitats underground, which raises the question of why send humanoids at all if you're just going to dig tunnels. Then there's the return journey problem. Musk envisions Starship as a fully reusable system but Mars lacks the infrastructure to refuel for a trip home. The plan apparently involves either producing fuel on Mars, technology that doesn't exist yet, or sending multiple advanced missions to preposition fuel adding years and billions to the timeline. What's truly shocking is how quickly this is all happening. The first full-scale Starship test was just last year. Optimus went from a guy in a spandex suit to walking robots in under three years. The pace is unprecedented in aerospace history, which explains both the excitement and skepticism from experts. University of Arizona's Chris Impey perhaps put it best, implausible, but not impossible. That sums up the entire mission. The laws of physics don't forbid it, but the engineering challenges are staggering. Musk's 2026 target would require solving problems that have puzzled NASA for decades in just two years. Yet consider what SpaceX has already accomplished. They revolutionized rocket landings when experts said it couldn't be done. They're launching more mass to orbit than entire nations. If anyone can pull this off, it's probably them. But Mars is orders of magnitude harder than anything attempted before. The implications of success are world-changing. A working Mars transport system would make lunar bases look trivial by comparison. It would prove that interplanetary civilization is possible within our lifetimes. And it would cement SpaceX's dominance in space for the next century. But failure could set back Mars ambitions for decades. A high-profile crash might scare off investors and governments from supporting future attempts. The stakes couldn't be higher. Which explains why most space agencies prefer slow, methodical approaches. As we stand on the brink of this audacious attempt, one thing is certain. History will remember 2026 as either the year humanity became interplanetary or the year we learned just how hard space exploration really is. Either way, the next two years will be exciting in space flight since Apollo. So, what do you think? Is Musk about to make history or repeat it with another missed deadline? The countdown to Mars has officially begun and we'll be here to cover every explosive second of it. Let me know your thought in the comment below and don't forget to subscribe Thanks for tuning and we'll catch you in the next update.